Welcome to Friday. According to some experts and historians, Friday is supposedly the beginning of the weekend. I'm still not too sure about that. Today, though, we are going to have the recap of what's happened in the second week of Mythic Plus this season, as well as these first few days of the beginning of the third week with the new affix. We are going to talk about that as well, because this new affix is... um. Uh, you know, kind of a miss right now. But let's go and take a look for now at the initial, you know, the initial reactions of how the second week of Mythic Plus went. Now, worth mentioning, the second week of Mythic Plus was the one with Zalatat's Bargain Oblivion. So, you know, the orbs falling from everywhere and you have to pick them up. And the buff was Mastery and Leech, which is pretty good for both healers and DPS as also tanks. It was acceptable, except for a few mo moments, you know, in a boss, perhaps where you have to move around and the orbs are spawning on the opposite direction, etc, etc. But even the buff itself was pretty nice for most of the players. These are the results after one week when it comes to the damage, when it comes to the DPS. We see a few at this point. We are at the end of the second week, so we have some consistent results with the best performers. Frost DK and Anoli DK, both of them doing very well. Red Paladin, Assassination, both of the Shaman specs. We do start to see a few interesting changes, something that we have already seen a couple of days ago when we talked about the raid, Fire Mage. Similar to the raid, but more popular, more popular in Mythic Plus, you have Fire Mage being much less played than Arcane. But while in the raid, Fire Mage was played almost 15 times less than Arcane, in Mythic Plus, Fire Mage is, you know, only played three times less than an Arcane Mage is. So there isn't nearly as much of a gap between the two specs, and Fire Mage is doing just slightly better than Arcane is in Mythic Plus right now when it comes to high, higher, 8 plus level keys into the 10s and the 11s. Other interesting results are the buffed the buffed balanced druid who is now no longer no longer meme level okay we, we can say that quite quite surely in mythic plus yes the performance in the raid is still not great but in mythic plus they're definitely more competitive same goes for marksmanship hunter which of the two ranged hunters now has the clear choice between the two played 20 times more than beast master his who continues to have their AUE damage woes at the moment, Beast Mastery. So these are the results of, at the moment. You also have the, I guess, more clear pick for Warlocks, where Destruction is overperforming both Affliction and Demonology, despite many players still going for Affliction this season. That's been the choice of the players. We can look also just for, just for as a pet peeve, the damage done by tanks and healers. We do have very, very close and even balanced when it comes to tanks, without, with the exception of just one, Protection Paladin, who is also the least played of the, of the tanks, but the other tanks are very close. We can say quite the same when it comes to healers, we have three clear outliers in terms of damage, Discipline, Restoration, Shaman and Preservation Evoker, doing significantly more damage than the rest. This is due to Discipline, weaving damage in their rotation by default and then due to the free damage that resto and preservation can do preservation starts the pool with a fire breath and a free cast of living flames on the enemies and that's just enough to carry a lot of their damage in the pool resto shaman does the same by putting down their totemic surging totem and letting acid rain from healing rain tick for free damage and that again is good enough for them to have decent enough DPS in Mythic Plus keys. However, this is just a damage number. That doesn't mean any of these specs is going to be particularly meta just because their damage is here. It's going to be perfectly possible to be able to see certain specs lower down being used more because they slot better in certain compositions. After all, the difference in damage in here, we have mentioned a couple of the, the higher performers, but you know, difference in damage, you know, from Elemental, who is supposed to be the, the fifth best, and something like bottom half, like Havoc, Demon Hunter, is barely 10%. 
of damage so there might still be differences when it comes to the, the options the choices and the picks of the specs so we have the three weeks of this mythic plus season starting from the first week of the season the second week of the season and then the first few days of this news of this new week so this is this one is the, the, the least relevant because it's only a couple of days old so for the trends we can see continue is the one for the healers where resto shaman started the 64 and now went up to 70 percent at the end of the second week we also had the same we mentioned when it came to tanks where we saw both guardian and protection warrior increase be practically the only two of the tanks significantly increase their popularity with of course the logic that if two tanks become more popular there must be other tanks that lose popularity and those were blood and vengeance so we have now more of a presence of prot and guardian quite significant at this point compared to at least vengeance prot paladin and brewmaster monk so tanks and healers uh, seem to have the first initial idea of a meta which is rest of shaman and then either guardian or protection warrior this is only after a couple of weeks of the season when it comes to dps of course it's more it, it does have more more of, a, of an option for different specs however we do still see some pretty large bars in here one large bar is frost death Knight at the moment increasing from week one you also have augmentation evoker unfortunately that time of the season again augmentation is the second highest of the specs followed by arcane after them after them, it's open season for multiple specs, you know, Assassination, Balanced Druid, Elemental, even Enhancement, Fury, Retribution, Paladin, all have a decent amount of representation. So there is enough of a spread for, for specs to have possible room in a Mythic Plus composition right now. We can move over to the overall results straight from Raider I.O. You can, of course, always see the difference between what, you know, the overall population is going to play compared to the top keys you know the very high keys at this moment is mostly 13 keys with the exception of a couple of the easier ones arakara and, and mists being the ones that are pushed the most if you look at here most of these keys will be arakara and mists pretty much and that's mostly what we have already seen in here right we have prot warrior and guardian druid as the two main choices you still have of course a few of the other tanks but those are the two that stand out the most the healer again the majority in here will be rest of shaman and then what we just touched on the popularity of dps it's frost it's augmentation and it's mage right that seems to be the initial idea of a composition in mythic plus right now the one that seems to be replaced the most like if we have to look at some some possibility of as we mentioned some of these slightly lower popularity specs to have room in these groups seems to be mage if you look at whenever someone gets replaced you have the two and then not a mage you know the two and not a mage be mostly perhaps due to the fact that you already have your bloodlust and your bloodlust and you already have your combatress possibly even your combatress so you don't exactly need mage specifically for that in terms of damage they are definitely lower than a frost dk if you're running augmentation you're not going to replace augmentation so that the, the the next default one to replace would be the mage at the at the moment you can see here the gap in difference where if you start looking at key levels for example from 10 to 11 it still seems quite even between the tanks if anything it seems like blood is the highest tank between 10 and 11. As soon as you move to 12 and up, which is when Zalatat's Guile becomes a thing. So you lose the affix, you lose all those things, and then you only play the same key over and over. It's when Blood starts losing over for Guardian and Protection Warrior. You have not really the same thing for healers, because Shaman was already the more played spec at 10 to 11, and when you move into 12, it's even larger, it's even higher the advantage. For DPS, it's again what we just saw in here you do see more of an even spread as usual still very popular red paladin still very popular fury warrior and then you move into 12 only and the popularity of both warrior and red paladin goes down a lot in favor of the specs we just mentioned augmentation and frost death knight the reason why mage that doesn't look nearly as high as them is because arcane and frost are actually splitting their time in being popular and even fire so they are not in a situation like you know only augmentation is being played versus devastation there is more room for mage to play frost or to play arcane or then back to playing frost and then back to playing arcane 
So it's more it's more it's more split between between the two. Obviously, the results in here are going to be more or less what we just mentioned purely based on the results or on the popularity. Again, Resto Shaman being ahead of the other healers, Guardian and Protection Warrior being ahead of the other tanks, Augmentation taking the S tier. Unfortunately, again, Frost DK being one of the higher results, Major mostly finding this position due to their performance right now. The damage they are doing not nearly as much because of their popularity as you see here if we go back to looking at popularity fire mage wouldn't be nearly as high as they as they are now this one also is more on a casual level it starts counting from seven keys which are not you know particularly challenging at the moment especially for for high level for high level players you will see a similar situation also changing changing the tier list where some of the specs we have just mentioned doing very well across the board are still being shown quite highly there are some interesting picks in some of these rankings for example balanced druid making it into the s tier as much as augmentation right and then you wonder what what the reality is of of that s tier and you see that you know that doesn't seem quite the same level of representation in these level of keys but we have seen it to be fair to be fair we have seen it as one of the alternatives one of the few alternatives as we mentioned when you wanted to replace one of the dps we mentioned replacing the mage so that you can keep the bloodlust and the combat rest druid does bring combat rest so what you see here is that some of these runs that will have a proto warrior so not the combat rest from guardian druid they will not have for example a dk to run druid so they will not have the DK instead they run Druid. They will not have a DK to run a Druid or again here the DK to run a Druid. They do find some room to be played definitely more than pretty much actually all of the other non-mage, non-evoker specs on par more or less with Elemental at, um, at the moment. But this just goes to show that, you know, you don't really get to have a one-to-one -one translation on who is doing top damage versus ha these must be the specs that are meta for example arcane is meta and arcane is here you know frost mage is also meta and frost mage is here you also have as we have seen ret or announcement or devastation evoker or outlaw rogue not really being seen nearly as much as the other specs based on their damage for example devastation is here right and and we we touched on this even when we made our prediction rankings pre-season i think we put devastation like a tier doing quite well and then we said but augmentation is s tier and if that's the case then devastation goes into the bin which is what is happening right now even if devastation's damage is good doesn't matter you will likely and i will repeat this again every week you will be very likely not running to specs of the same class in the same compositions uh, when it comes to very high keys eventually over time and the devastation augmentation is one of the very early examples of that the other one is you know whenever for example you see the balanced druid the guardian druid magically disappears right it's run with a prot warrior instead that also often happens in in mythic plus not not to put too much emphasis on this damage was the point when it comes to the size of the nerves to the difficulty of the dungeons we have seen the effects of the nerves because this week grim battle has gone up by a bit over 10 percent in success rate after being nerfed so we are seeing the effects of these keys being being quite easier to complete we are still of course nowhere really close to the good old days you know even if we stretch the timeline pretty much since like almost a year from now basically you can see that once you look at the easiest keys you have to scroll down to well to to nothing there is not a single key of this season that is in the top what top, top 20 of easier keys you know even if we scroll down to just <laughs> from like july to now you do have yeah you do have all of the current season's keys basically at the bottom and then the older dragonflight ones at the top that's the current difficulty of the of the dungeons right now which is quite high most popular compositions as a whole in terms of combos as usual they are not going to be representing what you're seeing here so these are our top keys and these are just the more popular in general so even though you still see some hints of what happens in high keys like for example resto shaman or for example frost dk in most of the keys and augmentation evoker you then see other things 
like not nearly enough guardian druids as the top meta results would suggest also way more red paladins that continues to be the super popular melee options as soon as you go into all mythic levels red paladin just skyrockets up so you do see them in here being quite popular so this one is more to get the full picture for the general overall keys rather than the top level the top level the highest level of keys when it comes to when it comes to the mythic plus meta now admittedly there has been a reasonable bottleneck in the last week and the beginning of this week we can also picture it in these results when it comes to the meta because as you, as you can see we started with 11 level keys at the high level and then the week after that we only went up by 0.2 so the keys weren't getting that much higher and then this week with this new affix we actually went down a full level in keys so there has been no progression whatsoever it is in fact getting even harder this third week because this new affix Zaratat's bargain that has been even the revert to the initial nerf it's still terrible you know void bound the whole the whole the whole thing about the ad spawning it's not just about the extra damage you need to do to the ad it's also the less damage you are doing to the pack of mobs because this affix is giving that pack of mobs damage reduction so you're losing damage because they are taking less damage it's the fact of the buff this buff is absolutely terrible uh, it's decent i guess for the healer once in a while but the 50 percent cooldown reduction for 20 seconds is awful this translates in a 10 seconds cooldown reduction so if you have an ability that goes on a 30 second cooldown and this buff procs it will go off cooldown in 20 seconds instead of 30. this is nothing you now compared to the 20 percent haste or the 20 percent mastery you were getting last week this is nowhere near the same amount of damage you are getting on top of the fact that you have to do a bunch of damage to the affix itself as opposed to the first couple of weeks of affixes which was just using crowd control or soaking them up so you weren't actually losing damage to gain those buffs so this one is a terrible affix which makes you lose damage and lose time in the key so we are not seeing any progression right now so we're not seeing the power of certain specs stretch even higher because you know the powerful specs can start to get into 13s and 14s and 15s this week it's not really happening so we're not really seeing this gap stretch even even higher right the score the average score is still stuck at 2600 you know even for tanks 2600 even for healers 2600 it's not getting higher than that because keys aren't being done above that so for now the meta is still somewhat compressed at the moment we're not we're not stretching it out because keys have remained too hard for the beginning of this season to allow for that it's definitely uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stretch out later in the future when the affixes will be more powerful and the perhaps more specs will be buffed or more keys will be nerfed to be more attainable since we've just seen the dungeon results being still quite tough this season but overall this was the recap for today and for the end of the second week of mythic plus as well as the beginning of this third week of mythic plus which i'm i'm afraid by the time we come back here about a week from now to talk about week three of this season there won't be much to talk about because of the current state of this uh, weekly affix kind of making things a bit um, a bit stale a bit frozen in time because not much will likely change this week but for today it is now time to leave each other on this friday we're starting as usual the goodbyes by thanking everyone for watching the video as well as for supporting completely for free by liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to the channel itself now with these things out of the way thank you guys for watching see you guys tomorrow and in the meantime I remember now to drink in between my video takes so my voice stays refreshed it's a it's a good idea